I think of an image in my mind, but I really, like, I think, because I'm sort of limited in terms of my narrative capacities, I don't really think about what happens. But, you know, I mean, I really admire filmmakers and writers who are able to think linearly. Mm -hmm. But it makes your work your work. Yeah, I guess so. After doing Beneath the Roses, which for all intents and purposes was this enormous project, almost like an epic project that was seven years in the making and eight productions and many hundreds of people involved. And I knew when that project was complete that I wanted to do something very, very different. I didn't know what it was that I wanted to do, but I knew it was going to be something much more organic and smaller scale. My friend Wes Anderson, the film director, had made Life Aquatic in the sound stages, and he always told me sort of great stories about the place. So when I was in Rome, I just asked to take a kind of private tour of the studio. When I went onto the back lot, it was one of those moments that come few and far between where I saw the whole project. Small scale black and white photographs of the emptied out sets. I was completely struck by just the, the kind of fallen nature of this place and sort of sad, beautiful aspect of the landscape. Even though I was determined to do something very different, it was also very unnerving for me. And I had never photographed outside of this country. I very much consider myself an American artist coming out of American tradition. So just the notion of making pictures outside of, um, in a new place was daunting. It was at first difficult because I was very clear in my mind I wanted these pictures to be um, very emptied out and one big decision I made early on was I wasn't going to use any lighting or very there's a couple exceptions to that and then obviously there's no people in these photographs mm -hmm. um, and the other main big thing is I sort of in my mind I made a decision not to change anything you know so I, I left everything as is so I didn't intervene um, with what was in front of me. There was already so many levels of sort of, of reality and fiction and artifice and nature that I didn't have to intrude on it to make it any more mm -hmm. compelling. What I wound up doing is like I worked with my cameraman and digital coordinator, so it was the three of us for the most part, but whenever we needed something, we would walkie-talkie them. And essentially what we needed them for was just um, making a camera stand if we needed it, or doing um, wet downs, which we've done a lot of, and then um, fog, we did a lot of fog machines. So those were the th things, those were the interventions that we used. I was almost doing the, the, the opposite of what my usual job was, which was like, typically I would take ordinary life and make it sort of cinematic in a way, you know, heighten it through kind of cinematic production. Here, I was taking cinematic life and trying to make it ordinary. I did everything I could to sort of neutralize the subject matter, including not using lights, including to focus on how things were falling apart, uh, how nature in, was intruding on it. So I saw my role as a much more kind of objective viewpoint, you know. And I was very much conscious of referencing that whole history, that whole tradition of uh, picture making. And it was very hard for me not to think about like 
Ache, mm -hmm. for example, while making the pictures, or Walker Evans. And these are photographers who I've always loved. It's also one of the reasons I made the pictures in black and white to reference that tradition. The pictures did become feel realer in black and white. In other words, the, photo, the sets feel more set-like in color because you see more of the kind of uh, the texture of things and the, and the surface of things. So they, I really wanted the pictures to feel timeless and an, out of another place. In terms of making the pictures, they were in every way completely different and it was very freeing to me. So I guess one of the main things is this is the first time we shot completely digitally from beginning to end. For all of Beneath the Roses and before, I used 8x10 camera with film and then scanned everything. This was a much more sort of freeing process. I shot much, much more in terms of different uh, vantage points and viewpoints. So typically in my previous work, I would essentially create a single image, you know, for uh, that was framed and sort of considered months before the production. And this, in this way, I was in these pictures. It was almost like a return to photography for me. Like, uh, so I was working in a much more organic way, much more fluid, much more sort of physically engaged. And it was a great sort of. Uh, re-engagement with the medium.